Hey guys, welcome to another Monday morning video with Rosella. Stephanie's not back with us yet, but she'll be back soon. We predict that to be true the case. Hi, Rosella. How are you? Hey, yep, she'll be back any day and then you'll have both of us. Yep, the dynamic duo will be reunited. In the meantime, Rosella's been carrying the torch just fine. Notice that quartz, torch, Olympic flame kind of analogy. Ooh. I put that in there. Not the bad, Olympics huh? have been like stellar this time around. You've been doing good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. We could talk all day about the Olympics. I love watching them. Right. Having said that, what we were talking about prior to the, our video here, guys, was um, bridge loans today and alternatives to that for those buyers who own their current home, want to buy another home, need some equity out of the current home, home in order to buy the new home, and they also have that payment on their current home, which is causing problems. So one way to do it, as Roselle and I were chatting, is doing what's called a contingent offer. You want to explain what a contingent offer means, Rosella? Yeah, so a contingent offer is basically when we submit the offer for you, the purchase of that home is going to be contingent on the sale of your current home. Meaning you cannot purchase that new home until the home that you currently own is getting ready to close and the sale of that kind of rolls over and is used for the new one. So if you don't sell your current home, you're not buying your new one. It's contingent mm -hmm. on all of it. And so how do sellers feel about contingent offers, Rosella? Um, it's hit and miss depending on what the seller's needs really are. Because sometimes sellers are in the exact same situation and they're looking to buy as well. So they're very understanding of a contingent offer because they under like they're in the same situation. However, some sellers sometimes they aren't looking to buy and they're ready to just cash out on their equity of their home and they're getting out of there and they don't want to deal with their buyer having to get a home under contract and sell because that just extends their timelines being a contingent buyer does some, oftentimes make it a longer process so certain sellers aren't about it but certain sellers really need that time to be able to find their future home as well or move relocate so it can go either way from my opinion all right. And what happens if a buyer has a contingent offer on a home mm -hmm. and the seller gets another offer from someone that's non-contingent, maybe yeah. at the same or even a higher purchase price? What does that do to that first offer? So basically, we call that contingent bump, meaning you're getting bumped to the back of the line. If a new yeah, if a new offer comes in and it is a better offer, meaning they don't have the contingencies on the sale of another home, then they're going to be better positioned to buy that home. Basically, they're a better buyer. There's no other way of saying it. So you then get bumped behind, and then they can kind of take a front spot. Oftentimes, this is like a cash buyer that's coming in. Um, that sort of thing. So contingent bump also is a downside just because, well, it deters, you know, you don't want to get bumped. You want to stay under contract. <laughs> yeah. So uh, everything else being equal is probably better to be a non-contingent buyer than it is a contingent buyer. Is that correct? Absolutely. It is. And oftentimes, if you know you're going to be a contingent buyer, it's better to wait until you have your home under contract because then that shows the people that you're making the offer to, hey, I have a home, but it's a great home. It's already under contract. Here are my buyers. Here's when we're closing. That way, the picture that you're painting is a lot better. And you're not just like, hey, we're at the back of the starting line. We have a long ways to go. So that's yep. also better if you know you're going to be a contingent buyer. Okay. Okay. So one solution is get a buyer in your house. Even if it's a contingent offer, at least it's a better contingent offer than not having a buyer. Another solution, mm -hmm. which we were talking about earlier, is called a bridge loan. A bridge loan, we have a whole video on, so I'm just going to describe it just briefly here, is when you get a loan on your home that uses the equity in your home as the down payment for the new home. And because it's a bridge loan, one of the cool features is that we don't have to, there's a couple different ways to do it. We either remove the, um, the loan amount, the, excuse me, the payment for the current home from the debt to income ratio and on focus on the new one, or we pay off that loan entirely, which is usually predominantly what we do with a loan on the existing residence. And we still don't include that payment into the debt to income ratio. 
And that helps you buy more house because if you had both mortgage payments and the debt ratio, that's a bit of an issue for the debt to income ratio. So you tap equity in your current home with a loan, get rid of that loan that's there. Do not have to put that, that new payment on that loan in the debt to income ratio. That allows you to make a non-contingent offer because you're using the equity that you just tapped in your current home as the down payment on the new home and you buy the new home. And just a couple more things here. You have one year to sell your existing home and pay off that loan. So that's kind of cool. You don't have to make any payments on that loan while it's sitting there for that one year, but you do have to get it sold in one year. Um, the okay, downside like of most bridge what loans. Go ahead. I was just wondering, I said, if, if we have the intention on selling that house, how long do we have to sell that house? Because yeah, some timelines can be really quick. Because you don't want to have to rush it and discount your property to get it sold in time. Right. So one year. Okay. One okay. year. But the interest rate in that house is kind of high. Okay. Um, I'm not going to quote rates here because I don't know what the APR and all that is, but it's higher than what your normal rate would be. I can tell you that. And the other downside is the rate on the loan for the home you're purchasing is also going to be somewhat higher than your regular Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac conventional loan because it's a bridge loan. And consequently, uh, they charge a little how long into it can you refinance out of that bridge loan to get into a standard? Would it be like a conventional loan that you would get into after the bridge loan when you sold the other property? Yeah. Or how Typically, if as long as you qualify for a, a conventional loan, yeah. We request our clients make six payments on the bridge loan before they refinance out of the bridge loan. And can simply speaking, being transparent about that, there's no prepayment penalty. You can do it at any time. But if you refinance and pay off that loan within that six payment thing, which is really seven months, that lender comes back to us and we have a penalty as a lender for delivering a loan. So mm -hmm. I typically talk to our clients and they almost all agree. It takes that long to get ready for a refinance anyway and get a little more equity and all of that. Okay, perfect. That makes good sense. And in this so, environment, we were talking about interest rates in the previous video some time back. In this environment with rates going down, you might want to rate, wait a year or so to take advantage of those lower rates rather than refinance quickly and then refinance again with get all those closing costs. Because the rates are higher on this one, what type of buyers or sellers are coming to you and utilizing the bridge loan? It's a good question. They're conventional buyers. And there are people okay. who could get a conventional loan typically, but they want to be a non-contingent because I've had buyers that have made like four contingent offers on properties, get bumped and go, forget this. Let's do the bridge loan because they just want to be a non-contingent buyer and be able to buy a home. Okay. Okay. All right. Yep. So Total option time. number three, was Ellen and I were talking about it earlier, is a new concept that we have available now where instead of getting a bridge loan on your current home, we have an investor who will make an offer, a non-contingent offer on your home to buy it and will remove all financing contingencies. The relevance of that is when all financing contingencies are removed and you have an offer on your current home, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have this little um, loophole, it's not even a loophole, guideline that says that we don't have to include that loan into the, the current loan you have on your house into the debt to income ratio because you have an offer and there's no financing contingencies. Blah, blah, blah. I can say that. No financing contingencies on that home. And you get a conventional loan for buying the new home. You get the bid benefit of the lower interest rate. Very so, cool. Yeah, it works out. It's really a slick little way to but, do it. Um, you said you have an investor that is doing that sort of thing for you. What type of properties are they? Single like? families for sure. Condos, I believe. Possibly and probably manufactured homes. But I'm going to have to double check on all of that to know for sure. Okay, perfect. Very cool. That's good to know about as well. We yeah. get creative with our financing, don't we? Yeah, we do. We have to sometimes. <laughs> and we, it's kind of fun, isn't it? We like it that way. We do have to get pretty creative. I agree. So, bridge so one loans, thing. I, go ahead, Rosella, you first. I was just going to do a little cap. So bridge loans are mainly going to be for buyers, sellers that are having a hard time making contingent offers. And they would like to be able to get out of that contingent war when making offers with the hopes of getting their home sold within one year. And then they have the option to refinance out of that bridge loan 
and get into a regular standard loan. Yes. Perfect. All of that is true. And a couple more things on these loans just to differentiate. So the bridge loan, I need to make clear here, when you get the bridge loan in your current home, that lender is going to loan up to 80% of the value of your current okay. home. So any difference between that 80% of value and the current mortgage you have there, that's the cash you have available for the down payment on the new home. So you have okay. to have significant equity to make this work. The okay. lender that's going to, the institution that's going to purchase your home and do the offer that has no financing contingencies is going to buy it for 70% of what they think the fair market value is. Now that sounds like a ripoff, doesn't it? But let me explain this a little further. So there's less equity available there, but if you have the equity, it's a better way to go because you get a conventional loan on the first house on the house you're buying and that could be better for you. And that lender charges less than 3% of the sales price on your home. It's kind of like less than a real estate agent's commission. Um, and if they buy the home, they it's a non-contingent offer to buy it. So if they end up purchasing the home at 70% of its value, they will in turn turn around and market that home and sell it. And they still only make the 3% plus any cost they have in marketing it, like the real estate commission and loan and closing costs and all of that, the rest of the equity still goes to you. So it's not like they take all of your equity in your home. It's a pretty good deal. Okay. Okay. Good to know. So you need a little bit of equity there. Yeah, you need some equity in both scenarios. Exactly. Actually, a lot of the homes here, if you've purchased in the last three to five years, you're guaranteed equity, even one year almost, you're right. Uh, one year we're kind of starting to mellow out because we haven't changed too much, but two years for sure. Yeah. Equity. You're good. <laughs> there you go. Call all your sellers, all your buyers in this case that have homes that are two, three, five years or longer and tell them they got a new technique here. You can buy a home and do a non-contingent offer. How about that? Bridge loans. Good to learn about. Thank you, John. Bridge loans. Yeah. Thank you, Rosella. Always a pleasure to chat with you. Any Thank parting you. comments? Parting comments. No, um, parting comments um, about the bridge loans. I've personally never done one of these, so it could be fun to just learn the entire process. So if we have anybody out there that has been like thinking of selling and like does not want to deal with contingencies, let's give it a try. That could be fun. Yeah, I don't know if fun is the word I use for bridge loans, but it is interesting and we'll get it done. And as I tell my buyers, you're not going to like me sometimes during this process because it's a pain in the rear end, but you're going to like me a lot at the end and it's worthwhile. Okay, deal. I'll take it. Rosella, always a pleasure. Thanks for your time today. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. I'll chat with you later. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.